had such a an age of exuberant uh, wealth and consumption. We've had an unparalleled access right. to knowledge and wisdom traditions and uh, arts and sciences, and that has created an enormous group of people who've been able to access all the self-cultivation wisdom traditions in the world in conversation with each other and the methods of science at, at a time when the whole process of evolution, cosmic, biological, and cultural is all beginning to knit together. Couldn't this create a, a critical mass of possible coherence and wisdom that could be the seeds of something else? And isn't there an opportunity that we're given by being born in this time when it's as if the eyes of evolution are open to itself as never before through us? And shouldn't we uh, let the great mystery know itself and adore itself through us and serve itself through us in a way that can bring about something else? And isn't there some possibility in all of that? All I can say is good luck with that on, if I just go through some of your assumptions, um, and I'm familiar with your background, so I do know where they come from. We are not the height of evolution. We are not, um, we have been so blinded. I mean, I, I rely now on much greater understandings of the cosmos and how the universe may work through working with very um, with my teachers who are mystics, who are enlightened ones. Um, for us to believe that we are creating a critical mass or that there's an enormous number of people who are now waking up to the powers of mind, to the, uh, the presence of uh, working with consciousness rather than just working at the material level. That's not an enormous number. How many people are on the planet? Is it 7.3 or has it already gone up to 7.5? It's billion people. How many people are really seriously focused on developing their consciousness? It's a minute percentage of the world's population. If you want to talk about critical mass, um, which I actually believe is a faulty concept, but let's just play with it for a moment. Who, who are, who's in the critical mass in terms of their awareness, their consciousness, their ability to focus on anything outside of survival? Well, that's half of the world's population right there. At least 3.5 billion people are, are living hand to mouth at some level or have insufficient amounts of food or, or livelihood. How many of the rest of us who do live in a fair amount of comfort are focused on our own development or are we focused on material gain I mean, the whole consumer, the, the pressure to just participate as a consumer is and in these realms of being entertained. This is not about a whole culture with masses of people creating um, a new level of awareness. We are capable of it as humans, yes, but... Just, just play with numbers and percentages there, and it's quite depressing where the majority of humans are. Some through circumstances and some through this utterly seductive consumer global culture, which defines us in minimal ways and promulgates the belief that we are naturally competitive and aggressive, whatever. And, and it bribes us, in a sense, with those comforts and conveniences. Of course. And it, it seduces us um, because our lives, a small percentage of people on the planet now, live lives of great comfort, material advantage, and um, 
comforts beyond anyone's expectation, physical comforts beyond anyone's expectation. But are we happy? Are we content? Are we growing? Are we spiritually awake? No, we're incredibly depressed, massive amounts of addiction throughout those, the first, first uh, world countries. So what is going on here? Well, I do not for a moment believe that we're at an evolutionary cusp. I believe, I know that ancient civilizations going back 10,000 years in Indian culture, 3,000 years, 4,000 years back, um, they were much more awake and much less distracted. And yet they too eventually imploded for a variety of reasons. Um, so I, I want us to look truthfully at history and not get seduced by some super special role we think we're playing. I mean, to say for a moment that the universe is working through us, I just find the height of arrogance. I can't even comprehend it. That's not the cosmos. Um, and we've made ourselves, this very small group of us, into the super special human that we're going to lead the way to a tipping point in human consciousness and then everything will lift off lift up if not lift off the planet and there will be this profound shift in consciousness which then affects the material world well if that was going to happen it would have happened in ancient tibet when there were hundreds of thousands of enlightened ones, monks who could leave the body. Um, or it would have happened in India with the huge proportion of yogis and mystics who were there. It's just part of our outrageous arrogance at this time in Western culture to think that we're so special or we're at the height of conscious evolution and we can create it for everyone. I, I don't get it. And you can obviously hear I have a lot of emotion about it. It's just, that's not who humans are. It's not who we've been. We have been wiser. We have been more conscious in ancient civilizations, even going back a thousand years in Tibet. As individuals, we can absolutely change and need to change and cultivate our awareness, develop a higher consciousness so that, so that this is where it shifts. Not that we're going to uh, then somehow shift all of, all of humanity or how we are together, but this is my warrior for the human spirit work. We want to shift our own awareness and our own capacities working with consciousness working with awakeness, working with compassion at heart, so that we can serve all the humans, the 7.3 billion of us who are just facing increased suffering. And there's a lot more to come now. Because um, I'm actually outraged. I have to say it truthfully, I'm outraged by this perspective that we're so special. Yeah. And that we have a role to play with the universe. Oh my God two trillion galaxies and we're special it just do the well, math well well it would seem that your emotion stems from care at, at root there's something you care about and you see that this uh you're being kind grandiosity <laughs> as as a uh delusion that prevents people from being present to what's real in yes. a way that can contribute. And that is so compassionately voiced, Terry. Thank you. It's true, but I do also have a lot of pent up uh, aggression in what I just said. Hmm. But I like your interpretation much better than my own. <laughs> but let's be real here it's both, right? I don't think there's any time to waste in working with those of us who have the gift of time and practice and spiritual teachings 
and intention and motivation to serve. There is no time to be lost. Uh, there's so much work to be done in offering ourselves as um, compassionate presences for people who are suffering terribly. And um, I don't do that because I believe I'm super special or that by working on myself, I'm part of lifting up other people. No, I just know there is work to be done from the, from the compassionate heart mind. Um, and let's get on with it and stop this. It's quite egocentric to me. Uh, this delusion of being so special as this, at this time as a human being. 